So I have a little bit of a problem. Now that the Mac Yak Power PC challenge is over, I have to take our community Action Retro Minecraft server off of this extremely noisy and power hungry Power Mac G5 tower and onto a computer that's a little more reasonable. Now, I could do something like a Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi 4 is actually a pretty powerful computer, but I think there might be a little bit of a better option. And it's a 12 year old Macintosh. But does this thing make more sense than a brand new Raspberry Pi? Well, there's only one way to find out, so stay tuned. Today's Macintosh shenanigans are brought to you by PCBWay. So many retro computing projects that we've come to depend on started with prototyping via PCBWay.com. In no small part due to their great pricing and turnarounds as fast as 24 hours. Just take a look through their shared project sections where you can find absolute gems like this amazing entire Apple One clone. So if you have any PCB needs, I hope you'll give PCBWay.com a try. The Mac Mini came out in 2005, right at the tail end of the PowerPC era, a sort of an inverse to the G4 Cube, putting function over form instead of form over function. It was the least expensive Mac ever released, meant to bring people into the Mac ecosystem. All it took was a mere $6.99 to buy your way into the wonderful world of Apple. And as a side effect of this success, well-specced, reasonably powerful older Mac Minis can be had for very cheap. The one we'll be looking at today is this 2009 Model 3,1 with a Core 2 Duo, 2 GHz processor, 8 gigs of RAM, which is upgraded from the original 1 gig, a DVD-RW, NVIDIA GeForce 9400M graphics, built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And when you compare this as a computer against something like a Raspberry Pi, it's actually quite compelling. I picked this Mac Mini up for $66 on eBay, and it came with everything needed to turn it on and start going. A power adapter, Mac OS X Snow Leopard was installed. The Raspberry Pi 4, on the other hand, with 8 gigs of RAM, well, that goes for at least $75 for just the board here itself. To really use this thing as a computer, you're at least going to need a case with some cooling, which will probably set you back another $20. And of course you need the SD card, which is probably at least a couple dollars more. So all in, you're probably looking at at least a hundred bucks or so for a fully working Pi setup that you can plug a mouse and keyboard into and just start using. Even just look at the difference in ports between these two. On the Raspberry Pi, you have four USB ports. Two of them are USB 3. You have your ethernet port. You have two mini HDMI ports, USB-C for power, and of course your GPIO, which is pretty handy for projects. Compared to the ports on the Mac Mini, it actually stacks up pretty well. I mean, you've got your gigabit Ethernet port, you have Firewire 800, which is pretty fun. You have two different types of display ports, which allow you to actually run dual displays. You have five USB 2.0 ports, you have digital audio, and you have your headphone jack and of course your ever handy DVD drive. And the Mac Mini's Intel architecture opens you up to a much wider array of software compared to the Pi's ARM architecture. Now granted, Mac OS has long since left this poor 2009 Mini behind. The maximum supported is 10.11 El Capitan, which is over five years old at this point. But the Raspberry Pi runs Linux, and Linux opens up a range of modern options for our Mac Mini as well. So I definitely want to run some form of Ubuntu Linux on here because that will give us a ton of easy to use software options. And the main thing I want to do with this is to run our Action Retro Minecraft server on it because right now it's running on our dual two gigahertz PowerPC G5, but that thing eats up a ton of energy and we can get just as much performance out of this Mac Mini, and plus I can just kind of stash it somewhere in my house. But before we install Ubuntu on here, I do want to just swap out the spinning hard drive for a nice, inexpensive, and fast SATA SSD. And while you can get a perfectly reasonable 120 gigabyte SSD for 20 bucks on Amazon, I splurged a little more for this 
512 gig version since I want to put some other stuff on this Mac Mini as well. Now getting into the Mac Mini is actually a little bit annoying. You have to take a very thin piece of metal all around the outside here because there's little clips in there and it's way too strong to use like a guitar pick or something and most knives won't really fit in that little tiny crack so I'm going to do something a little bit dangerous and use a box cutter. This is a pretty old and dull one but that should slide in there and let me detach these clips. So there we go, kind of a pain. And you can see all of those stupid little clips right here that hold the whole thing together that that's what you have to kind of push with the edge of whatever you're using to get in here. All right, it's a little dusty in there, so we'll just give it a little spritz of air. All right, and here is our hard drive. Easy enough to disconnect, we just have to pry this little board off of the end of it. And that's actually the thermal sensor. And then we just take these normal screws out. And there we go. Old clunky spinning hard drive is free. And we'll just place our 512 gig SSD in its place. And actually lining it up with the connector in there was pretty annoying because there is a gap underneath the hard drive here to the rest of the chassis. So you kind of have to hold it upside down and like finagle it into place like a, a freaking puzzle or something. But yeah, got it installed and it looks pretty good. All right, now let's put this thing back together at least most of the way and then try to install an operating system. All right, so I've got my favorite keyboard and monitor hooked up. Let's give this power and see if I broke it. Certainly a good sign. Yep, and off to the blinking folder. So I think for a bit of nostalgia, I'm gonna try installing Linux from a cover CD from a Linux format and yes, that's right, I am actually subscribed to Linux format, which is delivered to my house. And just like the old days, it includes a cover CD with, a, well, a cover DVD with a bunch of stuff for you to install. And in this case, we have Pop OS 20.04, which is based on Ubuntu 20.04. And let's see if we can install it from this cover disc. There we go, all nice and cover disc-like. All right, so booted into the Linux format, cover DVD number 271, and we have our choice between Fedora 33 and Pop OS 20.04 and, well, memory test. But yeah, I really like this grub screen. Let's install Pop OS 20.04. Okay, so it turns out to be a little bit of a pain to get Linux running on the Mac Mini 3.1, which I discovered by not being able to get any of these pack-in disks to boot into the live environments on here. And it turns out that the Mac Mini 3.1, the NVIDIA graphics card in here, does not play well with the open source graphics driver included in all of these distros and what I wound up doing is just well probably the best thing anyway I just made a nice Debian 10.7 installer CD with the non-free drivers and XFCE and you might be wondering hey why did you burn a DVD instead of using a USB flash drive well the second kind of quirk on this Mac mini here is that you actually have to boot off of an optical disk to get it to boot into BIOS compatibility mode, if you boot it off of USB, it's gonna boot into UEFI mode, which means that 
For some reason that I don't quite understand, the graphics drivers will not work properly and you will have unaccelerated graphics if you boot in UEFI. So if you're stumbling upon this video trying to install Linux on your own Mac Mini 3.1, I'll put some details in the description below about some of the weird things I had to do and I'll run you through real quick here in the Debian installer. So to install Debian on your Mac Mini 3.1 and probably any Linux distribution you try, you have to boot off of the optical disk and that's going to give you two options for the disk, Windows and EFI boot. Counterintuitively, you're going to choose Windows, which is going to boot it into the installer or live environment in BIOS compatibility mode. Now this is the Ubuntu disk just for illustration purposes. If your distro's installer brings up Grub, you'll want to choose either the Safe Graphics option or press E over the Normal option. And then you're just going to take out Quiet Splash and you're going to add No Mode Set. And that will boot it up in Safe Graphics mode because otherwise it's just going to boot into a completely black screen. And then once I got Debian installed, I had to install the Broadcom firmware for Wi-Fi and I had to install the NVIDIA drivers for the graphics to be properly accelerated. So all in all, I guess I kind of have to give it to the Raspberry Pi for ease of operating system installation. Although if your goal was to learn more about Linux, then maybe all of this fiddling around is actually a pro for the Mac Mini. Oh, and check this out. Since we're using XFCE as our desktop here, we have the option to try out one of the coolest Linux desktop themes ever made, and I think it's perfectly fitting here for this Mac Mini. So here's our normal desktop theme with nice black borders. This is kind of the default XFCE theme. So check it out, this is the Platinum 9.1 theme from Tim Networks who forked it from a Platinum 9 theme from Grassmonk and I will link this in the description below, but yeah, this looks pretty good. Window shade looks pretty natural and everything. This is a classic Mac OS look for XFCE. Now, I didn't take it all the way, like I still wanted to leave the dock down here and the desktop switcher and stuff up here so I can flick around, but yeah, it looks pretty awesome. I even have the little rainbow Apple icon for the application menu. So yeah, I think what would be interesting now would be to put the Mac Mini up against a Raspberry Pi 4, and this is the four gigabyte model, which of course is a quad core ARM processor machine, and we'll see just which one comes out on top. So. I think it would be pretty fitting. I pulled out my little mini screen here, which we last saw in the miniature blue and white G3 video. And to give this Raspberry Pi the best shot, I'm gonna use the top of this little case here, which has a fan built in that'll go directly over the processor. And on both machines here, I have Geekbench version 2.4 which is the only version available for the Raspberry Pi. So this will make a pretty good comparison, apples to apples, <laughs> pun intended, of which machine actually performs better. And these two machines are pretty well matched up with the Raspberry Pi having a two gigahertz quad core processor, which I've overclocked from its stock 1.5, four gigs of RAM and Debian 10 XFCE, which is the Raspberry Pi OS version. The Mac Mini has a two gigahertz stock dual core processor, Core 2 Duo, eight gigs of RAM, and also running Debian 10 XFCE, just the standard stock version. And I polled all of you, and surprisingly, the majority of you voted that the Raspberry Pi would beat the Mac Mini in Geekbench. I'm gonna start these tests now, and let's see what happens. All right, I started both tests at approximately the same time and we'll see which one finishes first. And uh, actually the Raspberry Pi already seems to be going a lot faster. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, so the Raspberry Pi is already finished its test and has the results available. And we are still waiting on the Mac Mini to complete 
its run of Geekbench. All right, so the Mac Mini finally finished. And wow, <laughs> that is a heck of a difference. So the Mac Mini scored a total score of 29.27, and the Raspberry Pi 4 scored 62.68. An incredible difference between the you know, newly released Pi and the rather old 12-year-old Mac Mini, but still, I did not expect them to be this far apart. So as it seems, the Raspberry Pi is a much faster machine than this old Core 2 Duo Mac Mini. So I'm surprised now that we are skewing in favor of the Raspberry Pi over the Mac Mini as a serious computer. But I guess the moral of this story is, if you want to buy a cheap computer that's the best possible cheap computer, buy a Raspberry Pi. But if you like old computers and learning Linux, a 60-ish dollar Mac Mini is a pretty good buy. Okay, I've got our entire Minecraft server backed up to this little guy right here. Let's install everything onto the Mac Mini. And the next time you are logging into our Minecraft server, you might just be logging into this machine here. Okay, we've got the server running on the Mac Mini here. And it's not connected to the internet, but it is running locally here in my house. So let's just see if it's working. Got my trusty PowerBook G4. All right, I've added the Mac Mini server here locally. And yeah, it came up as online. So let's try to join it. All right, I'm logged in and look at that. Here's our server running on the Mac mini. And I really assume that this is gonna play just as well running from the Mac mini as it did off of the G5 because the G5 is two cores, well, two separate processors, but basically dual core, two gigahertz, just like this Mac mini. And the G5 has the same amount of memory as the Mac mini. So I think it'll be just fine off of here. So. Yeah, the next time you play this server, you're probably going to be playing off of the Mac Mini. And if you're not on this server, just like always, this is going to be open to everyone. So join our Discord and pop into the PowerPC Minecraft channel for instructions on how you can play on our classic Minecraft server. Okay, well, I think we've answered the question of which is the better low-cost computer, an old Mac Mini or a Raspberry Pi 4, and I'm really shocked to find out that the Raspberry Pi 4 is technically so much faster than this 12-year-old Mac Mini. But at the same time, the Mac Mini was less expensive. The Mac Mini also has better Ethernet, which is much faster actually than the Ethernet that's on this Raspberry Pi. And it's also a lot more fun to kind of fiddle around with this Mac Mini to turn it into a server running some cool software and now running our Minecraft server. It just wouldn't feel the same doing all that stuff to this Raspberry Pi. I mean, this Raspberry Pi is definitely amazing if you're doing some kind of hardware project where you have to tap into the GPIO pins. But yeah, just running a public Minecraft server for all of us to play on off of a Raspberry Pi, not as exciting. But speaking of exciting Minecraft servers, I've had so much fun getting a Minecraft server up and running first on the Power Mac G5 and now on the Mac Mini here. And I'm curious what you all think. What other interesting machines do you think we could run a Minecraft server on? Let me know what interesting computer you think we should try to run a new Minecraft server on and maybe we'll do that. But that'll do it for this video today. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more Macintosh and Raspberry shenanigans like this, Please subscribe down below and thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Justin, Chris, Rock K Mods, Sword Eclectic, and Spike, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping make these videos possible.